Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the vestibular system. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing the vestibulo-ocular reflex. In particular, we're looking at the slow phase of the vestibulo-ocular reflex, uh, which is the portion where when you move your head, rotate your head uh, somewhat, uh, then your eyes will rotate in the exact opposite way in order that retinal image can be fixed. Okay, so they'll rotate in the opposite direction relative to the head so that retinal image can be fixed. And we've been seeing that the vestibular system is incredibly important in this. In particular, the semicircular canals are incredibly important in this. And the absolutely key concept to understand here is that we have these three planes which contain pairs of semicircular canals, the horizontal plane, the RALP plane, and the RPLA plane. Okay, and each of the extraocular muscles, each of the 12 extraocular muscles that we've got on both sides, lies in one of these planes, and in fact four lie in each of the planes. Now, when we look at the four muscles that are in each plane, there are two which move the eye one way in the plane, so for instance if we take the simple example of the horizontal plane, we have uh, the medial rectus on the left hand side and the lateral rectus on the right hand side which will move the eyes um, rightward in the horizontal plane, and then we have the two other muscles which will move the eyes in the opposite direction in that plane, so the left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus. Okay, so that goes for all of these planes. It's a little more complicated for the RALP and RPLA plane, but think it through and you'll agree that it's the same for all of those planes, that you have two muscles which move the eyes, rotate the eyes in one direction in the plane, and two muscles which rotate the eyes in the opposite direction in that plane. Now, what's going to happen is when you rotate your head in one of these planes, you're then going to be activating one of the semicircular canals and inhibiting the other semicircular canal. And the way it's going to work is that the one that's activated by that rotation will be connected to the two muscles that are in that plane which will move the eyes in the opposite direction, rotate the eyes in the opposite direction in that plane. And then the one that's inhibited it will be connected to the two that you want to be inhibited because they will be moving the eyes in the same direction as the motion of the head uh, in that plane. Okay, so what we now want to do is have a look at the neural circuitry that actually underlies this. I want to show you the connections between the semicircular canals and the extraocular muscles. Now, just before we actually start looking at that neural circuitry, let's just remind ourselves of which semicircular canals we want to be attached to which extraocular muscles. Okay, so let's do this for the right hand side because it will be the mirror image for the left hand side. So let's start off with the right horizontal semicircular canal. So we're doing this all for the right side here. So let's think through which extraocular muscles we want this right horizontal semicircular canal to be attached to, i.e. to be activating. Well, we know that the right horizontal semicircular canal will be activated when we turn our head to the right. We've gone through that many times before. Remember, when you turn your head to the right, the fluid will move to the left. Okay, that's towards the ampulla in the case of the horizontal semicircular canal. And remember, the orientation of the hair cells is in the horizontal semicircular canal's ampulla is such that that will activate them. Okay, so um, we're going to get activation of the horizontal, right horizontal semicircular canal when you turn your head rightwards. Now, what extraocular muscles do we want it to be connected to? Well, we want our eyes to move to the left. So that must mean we want it connected to the left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus. So we want it connected to the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus, i.e. we want it connected to the ipsilateral medial rectus and the contralateral uh, lateral rectus. And that would be the same for the left hand um, semicircular canal. The left hand semicircular canal, horizontal semicircular canal, will be activated by turning the head to the left. And again, we'd want it connected to the ipsilateral medial rectus, which would turn the eyes to the right, and the contralateral uh, lateral rectus, which will also turn the right eye to the right. 
Okay, so ipsilateral medial rectus and contralateral lateral rectus. But as I say, when we're going through this neural circuitry, we'll just do it on one side because the picture gets horrendously confusing if you try doing it for both sides. You just have to uh, take the mirror conjugate uh, version of it for the other side. Okay, so right horizontal semicircular canal, we want it connected to these two and we want it to be activating those two. In contrast, the left horizontal semicircular canal will be activating the opposite ones, and that one will of course be inhibited when we turn our head to the right, and therefore those other two will be inhibited. Okay, now let's do uh, the right uh, anterior semicircular canal. Okay, so next up is the right anterior semicircular canal. So. Here's the right anterior semicircular canal. When will it be activated? Well, again, we've seen this lots of times before. It will be activated by us moving our head downwards uh, for and forwards, but to the right. So moving our head like this, if you like. Okay, uh, and uh, I'll remind you of why that is. Remember, when we move our head like this, the fluid will go backwards like this, away from the ampulla of the right uh, anterior semicircular canal, and that will activate it in that case because remember the orientation of the hair cells in the anterior and posterior semicircular duct and palais uh, is away from the utricle. Okay, right. Uh, so when we move our head down like that, that's when this one will be activated, so it needs to be connected to the muscles that we'd want to activate in order to maintain a retinal image then. So which muscles are those? Well, they're going to be these green muscles, and what do we want to do? We want to, if we're moving our head down like that, we want our eyes to move up like this. So we're going to want to activate the superior rectus on the right-hand side, so the ipsilateral superior rectus, so the right superior rectus, because that will pull this eye upwards. And which one do we want to activate on the left-hand side? Well, it's not the superior oblique, because that pulls the eye downwards like that. It's the inferior oblique, which will pull the eye upwards like this. Okay, so we want to activate the contralateral inferior oblique. And just to make sure this is absolutely clear, on the left-hand side, if we were looking at the left anterior semicircular canal, that will be activating the mirror image of this effectively. It will be activating the left superior rectus, i.e. the ipsilateral superior rectus, and the contralateral, in this case, the right inferior oblique. So it would just be the mirror image effectively. Okay. Right, next one, um, we want the posterior semicircular canal on the right-hand side here, so the right posterior semicircular canal. Which ones do we want it to be connected to? Well, again, let's just think this through. So when will it become activated? It'll become activated when we move our head backwards, so when we do this sort of movement. We move our head backwards and uh, in this sort of right direction here, okay? Um, and again, that's because when we move our head backwards like that, the fluid will go this way, i.e. away from the ampulla of that posterior semicircular duct, and that will activate the hair cells there because of their orientation away from the um, utricle. Okay, so which muscles do we want it to be attached to? Well, when we do that muscle, we want our eyes to move downwards like this. So which muscles do we want it to be attached to? We'll want it to be attached to the ipsilateral superior oblique, okay, because if we pull this superior oblique, it will pull the eye downwards in that direction, so we want it to be attached to the right superior oblique, and on the other side, we'll want it to be attached to the contralateral left inferior rectus. And again, if we were doing the left posterior semicircular canal, um, it would be attached to the ipsilateral superior oblique, i.e. the left superior oblique, and the contralateral, the right inferior rectus. Okay, so these are the muscles that we're going to have each of the semicircular canals attached to then, okay, and activating, and we've seen how it will work beautifully as a pair then, when, when you move your head in a plane, one of them will be activated and one will be inhibited, and you'll activate the ones that move the eye in that plane in the opposite direction to the movement of the head, and you'll inhibit the ones uh, that uh, move the eyes in the same direction in that plane as the head is moving. Okay, so I hope you have a good understanding of this now, and what we're going to turn our attention onto is understanding how the neural circuitry is going to make all of this work. 
So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to go over the page and I'm going to draw out a great big diagram of all the neural circuitry. But I want to copy this very important little table that we've got here out because this is the really important thing that we now need to understand because this tells us what I'm actually aiming for. I'm trying to see all of what we're discussing now is all about how is this one going to be connected to these two? How is this one going to be connected to these two? How is this one going to be connected to these two? So I'm just going to copy this out. So we'll start with the horizontal semicircular canal. That's the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus. So we'll put this here. And when we look at this neural circuitry, we're going to do um, all of it on the right-hand side. You could do it also on the left-hand side, but it makes the picture look incredibly complicated if you do try and draw both of them on the same picture. But don't forget that it is important to have it on both sides because of the fact that uh, you have to acknowledge that when one of the semicircular canals is activated, its pair, its partner, is going to be inactivated and that's also very important because that's inactivating those muscles that move the eyes in the opposite way in that plane. Okay, so we are doing everything though on the right hand side now and the horizontal semicircular canal, I believe it's attached to the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus. Now the anterior semicircular canal, what was that attached to? the right superior rectus and the left inferior oblique. So the right superior rectus and the left inferior oblique. And then finally the posterior semicircular canal that was attached to the right superior oblique and the left inferior rectus. So right superior oblique and left inferior rectus. Okay, so that's the key information that we're now going to use to progress forwards. So before I actually show you all of the neural circuitry, what I need to talk to you about is the um, extraocular muscle nuclei. So where are all of the cell bodies of the motor neurons that are going to innovate all of these extraocular muscles? Well, they are in uh, nuclei which control the extraocular muscles. And of course, there are three of these, the ocular motor nuclei, the trochlear nuclei, and the abducent nerve nucleus. Of course, corresponding to cranial nerves three, four, and six, which um, carry the axons of the motor neurons that are going to innovate the extraocular muscles. So firstly, what I want to do is just show you where all of these cranial nerve nuclei are in the brainstem, and talk about where the alpha motor neurons for uh, each of the different extraocular muscles that innervate each of the different extraocular muscles are actually going to be. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to draw out another picture of the brain stem, and I think we'll start. Mm, how do I want to do this? I'll start here. That's going to be in view, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we'll have the spinal cord right at the bottom here, like so. Then I'll have the medulla, of course. Here. Okay, and then above the medulla we'll have the pons. So the pons is going to be here, and it's a little bit stretched out. I mean, this is a bit sort of um, stretched out and not wide enough, but anyway, it's a picture. Uh, so here's the pons, and then we'll have the midbrain on top of here. Here is the right cerebral peduncle. Here is the left cerebral peduncle, the gap in the middle there, and then the rest of the midbrain going on behind, like so. Okay, so let's try and put onto this picture the different cranial nerve nuclei. So I'll start off just by putting the vestibular nuclei uh, down here, because of course they're going to be extremely important. So I'll put the vestibular nuclear complexes here. Okay, so we'll start off at the um, top with the ocular motor nuclei. Now, when you look at a section of the midbrain at the top, one of the big sort of landmarks that you can see is the cerebral aqueduct, which, remember, connects the third ventricle on top to the fourth ventricle behind the pons. Uh, and also you have a region called the periaqueductal grey. So I'm just drawing that on there. So at the centre, that is the cerebral 
aqueduct, also called the aqueduct of Silvius. Lots of things are named after Silvius. The lateral fissure is also known as the Silvian fissure, um, but um, I often just call this the cerebral aqueduct. Surgeons are really the only people you ever hear calling it the aqueduct of Silvius. And then around the cerebral aqueduct you'll have a region known as the periaqueduct or grey, also just called the PAG for short, so the periaqueductal grey matter, and that's that little region, that little ring of structure that I put around the cerebral aqueduct. Okay, right, so the ocular motor nuclei are going to lie just in front of that periaqueductal grey, so I'll put them on as these sort of blue dots here. So on either side you'll have a ocular motor nucleus, so I'll outline these to make them a little bit more distinguishable. There we go, so these are the oculomotor nuclei, okay, also called cranial nerve 3 nuclei, so cranial nerve CN3 here, okay, and these will contain the cell bodies of the alpha motor neurons that are going to innervate a lot of the extraocular muscles, so the ocular motor nuclei, they have the um, alpha motor neurons that will innervate the superior rectus muscles, the medial rectus muscles, the inferior rectus muscles, and also the inferior oblique muscles. The only two muscles that aren't innervated by the ocular motor nerve are the superior oblique muscles and the lateral rectus muscles, and we'll see the um, nuclei that innervate those later on. Now, it's a little bit... there's a further complexity here, which is that most of the alpha motor neurons in one of these ocular motor nuclei will innervate the ipsilateral extraocular muscles. However, there is one exception to that. So, if we look, for instance, at the right ocular motor nucleus here, that will contain the alpha motor neurons that are going to innervate the right medial rectus. So, it will innervate the ipsilateral medial rectus, inferior rectus, and inferior oblique. Okay, so what I'm saying is if I go into this right uh, ocular motor nucleus, it'll contain alpha motor neurons that are going to innervate the right medial rectus muscle, the right uh, inferior rectus muscle, and the right inferior oblique muscle, but not the alpha motor neurons that are going to innervate the right superior rectus muscle. It's actually going to contain the alpha motor neurons that will innervate the contralateral superior rectus muscle. Okay, so the left superior rectus in this case. So that's the way that the ocular motor nuclei work. They contain alpha motor neurons that will innervate the ipsilateral medial recti, uh, medial rectus rather, ipsilateral inferior rectus, ipsilateral inferior oblique, but the contralateral superior rectus. And that's just something to be aware of um, when we're actually looking at these pathways because it will look a little bit odd otherwise. Okay, so let me just add on here then the ocular motor nu uh, nerves rather coming out the front. So they come out in between the two cerebral peduncles here. So you must understand then that um, this ocular motor nerve here, the right ocular motor nerve, and then here's the left ocular motor nerve, this will go to the right eye and this one will go to the left eye. Therefore, the axons in, for instance, this right ocular motor nerve that are going to innervate the right superior rectus, they will have actually come from the left ocular motor nucleus. They will have crossed over and gone into this uh, right ocular motor nerve. Meanwhile, the fibres, the nerves, cells uh, that are in the um, right ocular motor nucleus here that are going to innervate superior rectus muscles. They'll cross over into the left ocular motor nerve. Okay, so that's one little complexity about the ocular motor nuclei. And let's move on now. So let's next go to the trochlear nuclei. And these are of course going to be um, the nuclei which are going to give rise to the trochlear nerve, cranial nerve 4. So the trochlear nuclei next, and this is cranial nerve, oh, what's the Roman numeral for four? I think it's that. I was about to do the, cranial, uh, the Roman numeral for six, always get those confused. There we go. Okay, so where are the trochlear nuclei then? They are actually just below the ocular motor nuclei. They're in the same sort of position in front of the periaqueductal gray. And of course, the periaqueductal gray goes all the way through the midbrain. Okay, the ocular motor nuclei, I hope the way I've drawn it shows that they're just sort of at the top portion of the midbrain. So underneath them, you're going to have 
the trochlear nuclei like so. And I'm sorry it's a little bit difficult to see, but as I say, they're in front of the periaqueductal grey at a lower section of the midbrain than the ocular motor nuclei. So this periaqueductal grey and the cerebral aqueduct, they go all the way through the back portion of the midbrain, okay? At the top in front of them you have these ocular motor nuclei, further down you have these trochlear nuclei. Okay, so what do the trochlear nuclei contain? Well, they contain the cell bodies of the alpha motor neurons that are going to innervate the superior oblique muscles, and it's the contralateral superior oblique. So the right trochlear nerve nucleus will contain the alpha motor neuron cell bodies that are going to innervate the left superior oblique muscle. Meanwhile, the left trochlear nerve nucleus, it'll contain the cell bodies of the alpha motor neurons that are going to innervate the right superior oblique muscle. So what actually happens is these swap over. So let me show this. So the, um, the trochlear nerves, they emerge from the back, okay? So what will actually happen is It'll go round like this and become the right trochlear nerve, and the right one here will go round like this and become the left trochlear nerve. So the trochlear nerves, as I say, they emerge from the bottom portion, the bottom back portion of the midbrain, and the fibres come out of the contralateral trochlear nerve nucleus. So as I'm showing here, this is the right trochlear nerve nucleus. The fibres will cross over and come out as the left trochlear nerve. This is the left trochlear nerve nucleus. The axons will cross over and come out at the back of the midbrain as the uh, right trochlear nerve, and then they'll go off to the right eye and innervate the right superior oblique muscle. Okay, so there are where the alpha motor neurons that are going to innervate the superior oblique muscles are. Finally, all we have to do is look for where are the alpha motor neurons that are going to innervate the lateral rectus muscles, and those are down in the abducent nuclei. Uh, which are in this sort of position down here. So just above the vestibular nuclei here. So these are what we call the abducent uh, nerve nuclei. So the abducent nuclei. And the abducent nuclei is, of course, cranial nerve 6. Right, so I'll colour those in as well. So we won't have them in blue. Loads of things have been in blue. So here is the abducent nerve nucleus, or on both sides. And these will have the alpha motor neuron cell bodies in that are going to innervate the ipsilateral lateral rectus muscle. Okay, so this is nice and simple. The right obducent nerve nucleus, it has the alpha motor neurons that will innervate the right lateral rectus muscle. Whereas the left uh, obducent nerve nucleus, it has the alpha motor neuron cell bodies that will innervate the left uh, lateral rectus muscle. And what will happen is this will come out and it comes out at the sort of junction between uh, the pons and medulla, like so. And these are the cranial nerve uh, sixes. So this is the left abducent nerve. This is the right abducent nerve. The right abducent nerve will go to the right eye. Uh, the left abducent nerve will go to the left eye. So that's very nice and simple. Now, uh, just before we have a break, the final structure that we're going to need, and we'll finish the anatomy in this video and then we'll actually have a look at the connections in the next video. The final structure we're going to need is a way in which the vestibular nuclear complexes are going to be linked to all of these uh, extraocular muscle nuclei, okay? Because the vestibular information is coming into the vestibular nuclear complexes. Neurons are going to have to come from the vestibular nuclear complexes to all of these um, extraocular muscle nuclei in order to actually produce eye movements. And there is a very special uh, white matter tract that is going to connect the vestibular nuclear complexes to the uh, extraocular muscle nuclei. And these are known as the medial longitudinal fasciculuses, or fasciculi. And these run right in the middle. So let me show them here. So at this level, they'll be right in the middle. And by the way, the medial longitudinal fasciculi, they actually descend through the medulla and go into the cervical portion of the spinal cord. And we'll see later they're part of the vestibulospinal reflex as well. But at the moment, we're not interested in this bottom portion of the medial longitudinal fasciculi. We're interested in the top portion. So you can see there are two of them. There's a left one and there's a right one. And they send up. And then they will come on the sort of sides up here of the um, top two 
extra ocular muscle nuclei so they're lateral to the ocular motor nuclei and lateral to the um, trochlear nuclei okay so these great big white matter bundles these are known as the medial longitudinal fasciculi or the singular is medial longitudinal fasciculus so you have a right and a left medial longitudinal fasciculus and often you'll just see them abbreviated down to the MLFs medial longitudinal fasciculus okay so as I say this is the connection between the vestibular nuclear complexes and all of the extraocular muscle nuclei okay so this is the way that um, the vestibular nuclei are going to get to the well axons from the vestibular nuclear complexes are actually going to get to the extraocular muscle nuclei to influence eye movements okay so that's the anatomy that we need to know in the next video I will actually show you the circuitry I'll actually show you how the horizontal semicircular canal on the right side is connected to these two and the mirror image will be true for the left hand side how the anterior semicircular canal on the right hand side is connected to these two and how the posterior semicircular canal on the right hand side is connected to these two and again I'll stress that the uh, mirror image of this will be true and really to fully understand how it works you do need to acknowledge that that it's on both sides because otherwise uh, you can't uh, understand that fact that when you rotate in a certain plane you'll have two muscles activated two extraocular muscles activated which correspond to the activated semicircular canal and two extraocular muscles of that plane inhibited which corresponds to the inhibited semicircular canal but to keep it simple we'll just have a look at the pathways for one side because once we've looked at it for one side it's exactly the mirror image of the other side so you've got that understanding okay so in the next video i'll do away with the anatomic picture and i'll just draw a physiologist picture where i'll have big nuclei and we can show the uh, neurons inside them okay so next video we'll see the circuitry